Now, what about precipitations and uh, precipitation changes in the Midwest? I already said that we, should, we expect more of the changes to come um, as uh, multi-day events, big events. How am I doing the time? Because I'm probably going to run over. I got five minutes. Uh oh, so we're going to run through this quickly. Um, so increased heavy precipitation events, seasonal shifts in precipitation, as I just showed you, more rain in the winter and spring, and lessons are about the same in, in the summer. Some years ago, I developed a concept that is used a lot. In fact, Senator Durbin has shown this before the Senate, um, called the moving states concept, which basically looks at the way the climate is now and says, what would the climate of Illinois be, be like by the end of the century, for example, based off of those projections? And basically, Illinois, by the end of the century, with a medium high scenario, not the highest, ends up, um, but even the highest probably look pretty much the same, looks a lot like eastern Texas. My uh, youngest moved to Dallas five months ago, and he's been lording it over me all winter how much warmer it was. And I'm just waiting, now that June's here, when it gets up to 115, um, I can tell him a few things. So. One of the big concerns is extreme heat, um, particularly in cities, uh, the effects of heat waves, a very significant projected increase in the number of heat waves likely to occur. Those have health ramifications, particularly the poor and the, and the elderly um, and the very young, and uh, are a major concern. Uh, this is about air quality. Uh, air quality is projected to be at worse. Something we can actually do something about because we can control the emissions of the things that cause the worst air quality, um, but, uh, but it's going to require an effort. And vector-borne diseases. Uh, West Nile is likely to become more and more of a problem as we, as we look at the century. 1995 was a major heat wave in the uh, uh, Chicago area that killed hundreds of people. Two minutes, uh-oh. Put too many slides in this. Um, that's huge projection in the, the amount of such heat waves. If we look at water levels, uh, levels of the Great Lakes are likely to decrease uh, one to two feet, depending on zero, zero to one feet for the low scenario, one to two feet for the higher scenario. It's not a huge amount, but, he, but if you look at a thousand foot type ship that travels across Lake Michigan, um, every inch of change in, in water level, they have to take off 240 tons of materials. So it's, there are significant impacts, as well as concerns about water uh, availability, stratification as the water as the air warms, and what that does to the oxygen levels in the lakes, and to the uh, impacts in fish. Speaking of fish, um, some things like brook trout, uh, lake trout, whitefish, are likely to decrease greatly in population over the century as the water warms. They're going to move further northward if they can. Um, I mentioned the stratification problem. Agriculture has good and bad things. Uh, good things increase in carbon dioxide and the growing length of the growing season. Bad things being um, the, the changing weather patterns, likely more big events. You know, the last days, few days kind of events are really good for agriculture. Flooding is not good. Um, but, but overall in the summer, you might expect a decrease in soil moisture. You might expect some other issues with pests and weeds. Um, increasing amount of CO2 in the atmosphere also likely leads to much further strengthening of, of insect problems. A uh, recent study that came out of uh, the campus here uh, has shown that. Forests are likely to be uh, in, in particular jeopardy. Um, I don't have time to go into the issues, but um, there's a number of a number of concerns there. Birds, about 50 species of birds are likely to move out of the Midwest um, and uh, onto other areas. So if you like American goldfinch, forget it. At the end of the century, they're likely out of here. But you might, might instead have summer tanagers. You now find in the South will be here instead. Uh, <laughs> But, uh, but there's plenty of other species that we have to be concerned about. Some things won't be affected. Some things like moose will be greatly affected. You won't see those in Minnesota and Wisconsin, probably, um, wherever you find them right now. But, um, but some species like raccoons and deer are probably going to do real well. Uh, 
this is just sort of an example for the ecosystems. The kind of things we have now are those on the left. The kind of things we might have in the future are more like those on the right, things we find much further south of here in terms of trees. Uh, lots of potential impacts of property infrastructure. I won't go into those. I'll just mention one thing. Those that are likely to be the hardest and least able to adjust are the poor. It's something we need to continue to be concerned about. This is not going to happen in isolation. The 60 million people in the, in, in the uh, uh, Midwest are likely to increase the number. More urbanization, other issues are going on at the same time, but we have to consider this as a holistic, in a holistic way. We have to be concerned about surprises. One of those surprises is what happened in, in uh, Europe in 2003. A very large heat wave killed many thousands of people. Many concerns that, that I have about the future one is the oceans currently contain about half of the warming because they haven't allowed the, the warming to fully affect in the atmosphere. And in fact, it's even worse than that because those particles I mentioned, which have a very short lifetime, are actually accounting for about a degree of warming as well. So we may have about two degrees that are still to come, even with all the emissions we've just made already. Uh, and yet, energy systems take decades to replace. We're not going to replace fossil fuels tomorrow. Um, some nonlinear issues, ice sheet disintegration, what's happening in Greenland is very scary and we don't fully understand. Uh, ecosystem concerns, um, and yet we have concerns about special interests having undue sway. The, the Confucianists have exert, you know, exert the media, as I saw this morning, and, uh, uh, and if they've had political control, I, I think that's rapidly changing. And they use the very same tactics they used to do with smoking. And I mentioned this earlier, the benefits of strong early action on climate change outweigh the cost. We can do things, we can manage the unavoidable, which means we can adapt, and we can avoid the unmanageable, which means we can mitigate. We have to be thinking about both. And finally, as we talk about responsibility and stewardship, we owe it to our children, our grandchildren, to leave a planet that they can live, live well on. Um, there's many ramifications of that, I don't have time to go into them, but I do want to end with our future will depend on the nature of human aspirations, values, preferences, and choices. It's up to us. Do we have the willpower to do something about this very difficult problem? Thank you.